Good evening, Spirit of Joy uh, middle school students, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Good evening, parents, small group guides. Thanks for taking the time uh, to continue our faith formation, even though we can't gather like we usually do. And that's, I know, happening for you in all kinds of ways, whether it be with family or friends or at school. Uh, we're all navigating, getting through this the best we can. And I'm, I'm glad that you can be together in this way and hoping that after my teaching time, which will be like it usually is on a Wednesday night, 25 minutes or so, that you will take time uh, either to meet in your small group, and I've invited guides to uh, meet with you via Zoom, and that might work for some of you. Uh, if that doesn't work, I hope that uh, parents and students, that you can take some time to follow up this conversation with the, the questions that uh, I sent out yesterday, Tuesday, or maybe questions that emerged from um, what's happening here now. I'd like to pray for you first before we go any further. So please pray with me. Lord, we thank you for being with us through these difficult days. We ask your blessing upon this teaching and learning time. We hope that you, uh, through a technology and through your word, that together you will break into uh, what we're doing now so that we might learn more about you be reminded of your love for us and hear loudly and clearly your command to us to love one another. We continue to pray for those who are sick tonight, for those who are struggling with the coronavirus. We're especially, we especially ask for your, your help, your power, uh, for those uh, healthcare professionals, for doctors and nurses and therapists and others who are on the front lines. Give them strength. Uh, we ask for a way uh, uh, to find a cure and a vaccination for this. and uh, Help us to be mindful that you are always with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, just one announcement. Uh, next week, uh, we are scheduled to meet again, large group, small group, but we will, not, we will be meeting this way. Uh, Spirit of Joy will not gather inside uh, of our building anytime um, before Easter, and it will be after Easter uh, before that happens. So next week we'll gather again, there'll be another lesson, and we'll put another uh, YouTube teaching time up like we uh, are doing now. So I want to start with a story. One of my favorite storytellers is a, a man, pastor, and uh, professor by the name of Tony Campolo. I first heard him at a national youth gathering in Dallas, Texas, and uh, he, he tells great stories, and he's put a bunch of his stories into a book. I'm going to read a couple of them for you tonight, just one now and one later. <clears throat> this first story is called A True Friend, and you're going to hear Jesus' words about friendship uh, tonight. It goes like this. Through Jesus, God told us that we were his friends. Some hint of what that friendship might be like is found in a commonly circulated story about a couple of soldiers in World War I. One night, as the struggle settled into trench warfare, a lieutenant commanded his men to sneak across a field and attack the enemy. Obeying the officer's command, the men inched their way out of their safety and began to crawl low to the ground toward the enemy. Suddenly, gunfire rang out. Bullets flew in almost every direction. The frightened men scurried back to their trenches as quickly as they could and then hunkered down under enemy fire. When the gunfire ceased, it was eerily still, except for the moaning and groaning of one of the men who didn't make it back to the trench. He was on the field, wounded. The man kept crying for his friend George, who was in the same unit, begging him to come and save him. George, in turn, pled with the young lieutenant, his commanding officer, to be allowed to go to his friend. But the lieutenant said no over and over again. He explained that he didn't want to lose another man in what would obviously be a, a foolhardy, a suicidal attempt uh, to rescue his friend. I've lost him. I don't want to lose you too, the lieutenant shouted. But the young recruit kept on pleading until the lieutenant finally said, Okay, if you want to get yourself killed, go ahead. I'm tired of listening to you whine. Go out and get yourself killed if that's what you want to do. And so the young soldier climbed over the edge of the trench and inched his way along the ground towards the sound of his friend moaning. 
He got to his wounded friend and then he began to drag him slowly back to the trench. And after pushing him over the edge of the trench, George fell in on top of him too. But it was too late. His friend was dead. The lieutenant yelled, George, I told you there was no point in your bravery. Why did you risk your life? You put this entire unit in jeopardy and for what? There's no point to what you did. You're a fool. And George answered, I was no, I was not a fool. When I got to him, he was still alive. And the last words he said to me were, George, I knew you'd come. I knew you'd come. That's what a friend does. It's what Jesus did for us. In our despair and hopelessness and woundedness, he left the safety of heaven and came to us and took us into his haven of rest. <clears throat> There's these wonderful verses in Philippians chapter 2, which says, Jesus did not count equality with God as something to be held on to. Jesus, as a member of the Trinity, could have stayed above the mess, the messiness of this planet. But Jesus, instead, out of love, emptied himself and took the form of a human being, a slave, that we might know we are loved, as Jesus says later, or in John's Gospel, that we are God's friends, that we are his friends. All right, so uh, the quiz. We'll go through these questions fairly quickly. Uh, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, Jesus took a towel and what? Remember the story? What did Jesus do? Snapped his disciples with it, washed the table before they held communion, washed his hands with it, or washed the disciples' feet. What was it? You said D? That's correct. He washed his disciples' feet. In Jesus' day, washing feet was done by who washed feet? The lowest slave in the house? Something that was done by the host to make sure guests felt welcome? Didn't bring fungus to the table? to make sure guests hadn't been stomping drakes, grapes and going to stain the carpeting? None of the above. Who washed feet? The lowest slave in the house. So when Jesus washed f f the feet of his disciples, he was taking the role of a slave. Thursday of Holy Week is called, do you know this? The Thursday before Good Friday, before Easter. It's called Monday Thursday, Monday Thursday, Monday Monday. Mardi Gras? The answer is it's actually Monday Thursday because Jesus issued a new command on that day, which uh, leads us into the next question. The word Monday in Latin means Jesus issued a new command. What might the answer be? Command, sad meal, Monday, holy night's eve. Monday means command, mandatum, mandate. It's like mandate Thursday. And what was that commandment? This new commandment Jesus issued was, love God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love one another as I have loved you. All of the above and then some. Well, Jesus said A, B, and C. So if the question was just in general, what did Jesus say? But it says, what is the new commandment Jesus offered on Monday, Thursday? And the answer to that is C, love one another as I have loved you. When he stooped to wash Peter's feet, what did Peter do? What do you guess? He objected at first and said, okay, go ahead and wash my hands. Objected at first, said, Not, wash my hands, wash me all over. Um, agreed, and then he changed his mind, or agreed, and then asked for a massage and a pedicure too. Peter, knowing that Jesus is really assuming the role of a slave, says at first, no, Lord, you can't, I should be washing your feet. You can't wash my feet. And then Jesus says, Peter, if I can't wash your feet, if you don't accept what I'm doing for you, then you can't be a part of what I'm doing, period. And then Peter says, wash my hands, wash my head as well. Jesus explained the foot washing by saying, you don't know what I'm doing now. Later you understand. If I wash your feet, then this is, I'm, I'm serving as an example for you to wash others' feet. A and B, neither A and B, uh, both A and B is the answer. After the foot washing, what happens next? Jesus says, one of you will betray me, told Peter he would deny him three times, gave the disciples uh, bread and wine, uh, Holy Communion, all of the above, pretty likely. 
And then within a few hours of foot washing, what happens? So hours later, what comes next? Jesus was arrested and beaten, tried and convicted, sentenced to death, all of the above, and then he was crucified. Within 24 hours after Jesus washes his disciples' feet, he'll be dead on a cross. John 15, 13 says, no, so, take your Bibles out. If you need to pause this and find your Bible, uh, do so. Let's look at that together right now. John 15, 13. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the fourth gospel. Please go there with me. John 15, 13. Let's look at, let's look at 12 and 13. Chapter 15, verses 12 and 13. Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. The greatest act of love that you can give another is to lay down your life for them, as we know that Jesus did for his friends, for his disciples, for us. So for one's teacher, one's principles, one's principal, one's friends, could be all of the above. But in this case, the scriptures say for one's friends. Okay. That is our quiz and the theme verse. And I encourage you again, if your Bibles are still open to John 15, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. The last command, the last, one of the last things Jesus said to his disciples is, love one another as I have loved you. It wasn't a suggestion. It was meant to give direction as to how they live their lives and how we live our lives too. So let's pray together. This will maybe feel kind of strange, uh, praying through a screen or to a screen. But parents, if you're there, you might read the dark print with me and uh, students whether or not parents are there, please respond with the words in red. Dear Jesus, you told us the greatest love of all is that which is willing to lay down one's life for a friend. Thank you, Jesus, for our friends. Then you showed us Jesus by dying on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for our friends. You modeled a life that we can share with all people. Thank you for the gift of love. And you told us that where two or three are gathered, you are there. Thank you, Jesus, for community. Let your love and presence show through in our lives today. Amen. It is said that soldiers in battle fight for their country but die for their friends. I don't know who said that, but I've known soldiers uh, who, when they've been in battle, those that they have been in battle with become friends in a, in a unique and powerful way. I want to read one more story. Uh, again, it's a story about soldiers. Only this is not about soldiers on the battlefield. This is about new recruits. So this takes us into like boot camp, a, a marine boot camp. And one of the persons who uh, signs up for the Marines and is in this particular boot camp and um, is a guy who I'm guessing was bullied in high school. He was odd, different from the other kids, different from the other guys. And uh, so maybe hope by joining the Marines, he'd get a fresh start. But in this particular story, it doesn't turn out that way. In fact, the Marines, the other recruits that he shares a barracks with, a place where they live, are worse than the guys he knew in high school. The story goes like this. A new recruit went into training at Paris Island, hoping to become a Marine. He was one of those young men who seemed to be a bit out of step with the norm, kind of odd, different, and he easily became the subject of ridicule for those who enjoy picking on other people, ridiculing, bullying, in this particular barracks to which this young Marine was assigned, there was an extremely high level of meanness. The other guys uh, were, were all a bunch of bullies. The other young men did everything they could to make a joke of the new recruit and to humiliate him. And one day someone came up with the great idea that they could scare the daylights out of this 
young Marine by dropping a disarmed hand grenade onto the floor and then pretend that it was about to go off. And everybody would be in on the joke except for this, this one guy, this one kid. And they were all ready to get a big laugh. They guessed what he might do. They thought he would scream, maybe cry like a baby, maybe wet his pants, maybe try to jump through a window. And so they set everything up. They were all in the barracks and somebody lobbed a grenade out into the middle of the floor and someone else hollered, it's a live grenade, it's a live grenade. It's about to explode. And they fully expected that this young man that they had bullied would get hysterical and do one of the things I mentioned, jump out a window. Instead, the young Marine dove onto the ground, pulled the grenade into his belly and said, run for your lives, run for your lives. You'll be killed if you don't. And everybody else in that barracks froze in stillness and shame. They realized in that moment that the one that they had mocked and scorned and bullied was the one who was ready to lay down his life for them. And so it was with Jesus. So it was with Jesus. Now that's a love story. I want you now to pause this YouTube video for a moment and turn and, and also do a YouTube search for this, Show You Love by Jars of Clay. Jars of Clay is a, a, a Christian group. I'm not sure if they're still recording music, but they did make a lot of music some years ago. So look for this video, Show You Love by Jars of Clay. You can stop this. I want you to watch that and then uh, listen to the lyrics of the song. Go ahead. We're back. So one of the lines in the song goes uh, sh something about showing love and compassion without words. And how, how do you think that's, the, what does it mean to show love and compassion without words? How do we do that? How do we do that especially now? I mean, words are important. Uh, phone calls, texts, we, we use words to show love and compassion. But what else is possible? And how did Jesus do this? From what you know about Jesus' life, what are some ways that he showed love and compassion? Talk about this now, or you can talk about this uh, later. We are going to look at just a couple of Bible verses. Uh, we already looked up John 15, 12 to 13. I hope you've underlined that or circled that or go back and do it. We're going to look at a couple others. 1 Corinthians 13, if you go past the Gospels, uh, you'll find Acts, Romans, and then 1 Corinthians. This is a pretty popular chapter, and uh, it's all about love. And in, in fact, it's often read at weddings, but it was not written. Uh, the missionary Paul didn't write this for a wedding. He actually wrote it for a, a church that was fighting all the time. They were angry at each other. They didn't get along. They argued about everything. And so he's giving them lots of advice, and then in the middle of his advice, he says this. And I'm going to go, uh, so look up 1 Corinthians 13. I'm going to jump down to verse 4. It goes like this. Follow along with me, please, in your Bibles. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. Now the suggestion is on the slide as a measure of how we're doing, and none of us do this perfectly by a long shot. But try inserting your name where it says love in these verses. So it would go something like this. For me, it would go, Jeff is patient, Jeff is kind, Jeff is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Jeff does not insist on his own way. He is not irritable or resentful. Read it that way and, and think about how you measure. Now, I, I want to say that some of the times I get it right, and I know there's other times I get it wrong. 
But this is kind of a script for us too, to think about how we love and how we might love. These words are a great, a great guide for us. Also a chapter worth noting, the love chapter. You could even put that in the, in the margin of your Bible. And then um, let's look up one more passage. This is Galatians 6.2. So you got to go a, a little bit, a little more towards the back, not much. Galatians 6.2. Uh, one, we'll read one more verse about love. goes like this, bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens. God put us in this world uh, to share the joys of one another. I mean, joy is magnified when we share it, and burdens are lessened when we're carrying a heavy load, when we're, you know, worried and anxious like some of us are right now about the coronavirus and maybe about family members who are especially vulnerable or worried about what's going to happen uh, in school because we're missing so much of it or, or um, you know, burdened by not getting together with friends. We can share that as we talk about it and uh, experience that together. So that's also love. Bear one another's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. We're going to skip those last verses. I want to again remind you that we're praying for you, and I hope that you'll pray for one another, that tonight sometime you'll take time to pray for your group members and, and uh, pray for your guide. Uh, we are in this together, and the, the, the burden is lighter when we share it with one another and that we let one another show uh, know that we're sharing it. So again, um, I'm praying for you. I hope that you'll take to heart some of these wonderful words from Jesus to know that we are loved and that we're invited to love uh, as best as we can in the way that we are loved by God. Peace be with you. I hope to see you soon. Good night.